Thank you to Fume for sponsoring this video. Cold turkey may be a great sandwich topping, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. And no, we don't mean going to an eccentric chocolate factory to get turned into a blueberry to kick the habit. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that can make replacing your bad habit easy. Fume has served over 100,000 customers, and if your attempts to break your bad habit have been difficult, Fume may be just what you're looking for. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash cinemasins or scan the QR code for a quick link. Use the code cinemasins for 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfume, T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com. And use code cinemasins for an additional 10% off your order. Opening the seventh movie in a franchise with the ending to the first movie, even though the sixth movie ended on a cliffhanger, all of which makes me feel like I studied for the wrong exam, had I studied at all. Constantly interrupting your tense opening scene by cutting back to obnoxious 3D credits. This would be really annoying if I gave even one microscopic about what we're cutting away from. Hey look, it's the doctor guy from the first film who cut his foot off. Congrats. You're about to f up the only film in the franchise that was halfway decent and actually made sense on its own. This place is supposed to be abandoned, but even if it were active, there isn't a steam pipe in existence that would be hot enough to successfully cauterize an amputation. I know that for a fact. I mean, I've heard it's a fact. Ah! For those of you that were excited to get this follow-up to the first movie, tough sh it ends here, but fear not, you'll get more in about 80 minutes when it all comes full circle like a poorly rendered 3D serrated plot boomerang to sever any remaining fondness you had for the franchise. I love the idea, as much as one can love an idea in a Saw movie, that one of Jigsaw's games happens at a public area. However, the movie expects me to believe that this entire contraption could be constructed in this very popular area of the city without anyone witnessing it, and I do not believe you, movie. What the f*** is this? What the f*** are you doing here? What the f*** are you doing here? Holy f***ing f that's a lot of f***s to get through in eight f***ing seconds, f***. I would love to see the instructions Jigsaw left behind for whomever of his followers built this contraption that said, Make sure everyone is fully clothed, but let's also make sure we're able to get some good cleavage shots of the woman. This has everything to do with the lesson I'm teaching, I promise. Hello, Brad. Here's your reminder that John Kramer designed this doll for a child, and not a child he didn't like, his child. So because Dina has manipulated Chad 1 and Chad 2 into stealing a few things for, they now have to choose who to murder in this death box? After variations on making dirty cops and the healthcare system pay over the last six films, we're now relegated to agonizing deaths of f***ing teens committing petty theft? What are you f***ing staring at, you mother <laughs> Do something! Yelling at people that have nothing to do with your current predicament and trying to make them feel bad is about the most Brad thing I could possibly imagine. While attempting to look at literally anything other than these two playing tag you're dead, I noticed that this doesn't even appear to be an abandoned shop. This place sells tools or mannequins or mountains or some sh**. Did none of the employees think at odds that their storefront had people in it? Of course, the alternative is that the shop is abandoned and whoever set up the trap also went to the unnecessary step of window dressing it too. And f*** me, I'm not nearly baked enough to buy that reasoning. We can't show any of it, but all the blood in this scene looks faker than the Klingon blood in the undiscovered country. Somebody help her! This chuckle f thinking that Dina could still potentially be saved. Maybe he was f***ing her too. Previously on Saw 6. Also, so far, we've seen the ending of the first Saw, a trap with some random teens, which, by the way, has nothing to f***ing do with the rest of the movie, and now the end of the sixth Saw, which means nine minutes later, we can finally start Saw 7. 85-minute movie has time for this! Jill is running away after realizing that Hoffman escaped the reverse bear trap, but how the f*** does she end up running toward him to hide behind this clothes rack? The body of Umbrella Health CEO William Easton has been identified. News previously on position. I'm sure everyone's favorite day at the police academy is when they show you how to sew your face back together after a mechanized trap has ripped it in half. Also, I don't care if we see every single stitch. Thanks for that, by the way. You could show me Jesus Christ himself descending from the heavens and using Tinkerbell's sprinkles to stitch this up, and I would still not believe he survived this. She looks crazier in a sack full of cats. That's catist. And sexist. But mainly catist. I'll give you evidence. Whatever you want. As long as I have your protection and complete immunity. Do we have a deal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a deal. Unless I missed the part where Ryan Gosling also works in the district attorney's office, he has zero right to grant immunity. Gotta get rid of all my IDs, but only after I show them to the camera, like a completely normal human being not being filmed one. Now, you survived a trap created by the infamous Jigsaw Killer, correct? Discount Norman Reedus is actually full of sh**. 
and is just riding the jigsaw victim wave. The problem, though, is that there have been so many bland victims by this point that I just assume he was in a trap, and I would completely forgotten who he is. Also, how has Bobby managed to get away with this deception? Jigsaw will even show up at a past book signing, meaning Bobby published this book while Jigsaw was still alive. Why would you ever take any kind of chance on incurring the wrath of a goddamn serial killer? Tell me more. Tell me about the actual experience. Yes, please describe your traumatic torture experience on what looks like a morning show aimed at Middle America. Right then, something inside me started to grow. Weirdest boner ever. But that's the heart of the story. Fake story or not, telling a supposed jigsaw survivor what the heart of their own story is, is pretty f***ed up. And so the sin, as always, is publicists. You want to know the only thing wrong with killing you, Jill? I can only do it once. Well, at least we're getting to the finish line of this Hoffman versus Jill story thread, and this isn't just some dream Jill's having. <laughs> Damn it! Also, why would Jill's dream subconscious create a Hoffman with a stitched up face exactly like the real Hoffman? The last time she saw him, he was so f***ed up she could have checked his fillings. Seems weird that her dream is more concerned about shocking us than it is shocking Jill. Using 8-track cassettes in the year of our lord whenever these f***ing movies are set unless it happens to be 1980. Also, what the f*** triggered the cassette to go into the player? Evan wakes up and starts wildly kicking and screaming, but how does the tape know that? Hello, Evan. You, your girlfriend, and your friends are all racists. I mean, f*** racists, but it sure does feel like the movie threw this and the opening trap in here because it knows the real game doesn't start until the 30 minute mark. And clearly we couldn't possibly survive that long without watching some assholes die in the most graphic way possible. Live or die, Evan. The choice is yours. This 30 second timer will take 1 minute and 26 seconds to get to zero. Evan had almost three times longer than he thought he did and he still screwed the pooch. <laughs> How exactly did the car start? I mean, once again, f racist and all that, but that doesn't change the fact that this car remote starting is all the bullshit. Ceramic gnomes dressed up like elves. He was abusive. I tried to stop it before. It looks like this lady survived her trap by pushing her ex into a bunch of upside down lawnmowers. Putting aside the logistics of setting that up, this means that her game wasn't based on a choice. This was just a matter of strength, right? If anything, the abusive partner has the advantage here, and how is that f***ing fair, John? You wanna know the best thing that happened to me after having to cut off my own arm? Okay, okay, Miss Pity Party. Yes, you were asked for a pound of flesh. But you didn't have to cut your arm off. I think a leg or a couple of feet would work too. What the hell is a camera here for anyway? The better question is, how are you only just noticing it? Wouldn't everyone have had to sign a release form before having all their trauma recorded for broadcast? We should never be ashamed of what we've gone through. Because we are good. And we are strong. Pretty sure the main reason anyone got in the jigsaw traps to begin with is because they were not good. So that would be a very weird lesson to take from the horrifying experience. I'd like everybody to have a look at something. You better come take a look at these nipples, cliche. We'll find out that his wife has no idea Bobby is lying, but how hasn't she figured out these scars are fake? I'm guessing they touched each other's naked parts at some point, and Bobby doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that would actually scar himself for this long con. Remarkable, if not a little perverse. Imagine if this is when we first saw Dr. Gordon, instead of that bullshit flashback at the start of the movie. Look, I'm not saying it would have saved the movie, but you know what? Fuck it, keep it as it is. Don't change a thing, let it burn. Also, I don't remember Carrie always ever having such an epically gravelly voice. It's like they wrapped the original sob and said, Here, smoke two packs of cigarettes a day, and when you sound like Darth Vader gargling a chainsaw, we'll bring you back in. Joyce, can I borrow for a second? Sure. I'll be in the car. Joyce? And whoever's abducting Bobby sure is lucky that Center Parting here asked him to stay behind, allowing them to kidnap him and Joyce one at a time. Or have they been waiting all this time for an opportunity like this? Also, there's being stealthy, and then there's appearing out of thin f***ing air between shots thanks to the editors, and I'll let you guess which one I think is happening here. What happened to him? The director asked Ryan Reynolds to bite into this apple while standing over this dead person so we'd know which one of them was the asshole. They always tell you not to smoke at the gas station. Holy smokes, this isn't even a jigsaw victim? They literally just rolled in this corpse to make a smoking at a gas station joke? At what point did they stop making Saw 7 and start making Scary Movie 7? The director told Ryan Seacrest to stare at this lady's ass so we'd know he's an asshole after he lost his apple in the morgue. I'm in a junkyard on 58th. Why? Paul came in about a car crash. Car crash, why are you there? It's not just a car crash. Jesus Christ, get to the f***ing point! This conversation should have been over in seconds, but this cop decides to bury the jigsaw trap lead so far up his own ass that Amanda is going to have to come back from the dead and cut it out of his abdomen. How many bodies? Enough pieces to make four. Hey now, that is making all the assumptions about how many pieces each person started with before the trap. Why them? Why now? Maybe I can answer that if I had a f***ing clue when now is. These movies have abused my trust so much, for all I know, this is taking place after Spiral.
What could possibly have triggered that monitor to turn on? Does Hoffman just have to hang out and watch the camera until Bobby wakes up? I can't even figure out how he has time to set up two different games and try to locate Jill the Killer. Movie does not understand how actual time works. The cage you find yourself in will symbolize your rebirth. Jigsaw and I had very different birthing experiences. I hope. Also, what part of the cage symbolizes the placenta? <laughs> Can you imagine wanting to know that? But, but seriously, what part of the cage symbolizes the placenta? This trap relies on luck as much as it does skill. Bobby could have easily died here, and then you'd have wasted a lot of effort on traps no one gets to see. And just curious, if he did die here, would we then be able to roll credits? Because I would like to do that. I hear there's teeth stuff later, and I don't, I don't like teeth stuff. Let me out! Alice in Chains. Now, I don't think her name is actually Alice, but if you can tell me what it is without looking it up, I'll pretend to feel bad that someone has made you watch this terrible movie multiple times. Wait, this specials board says that the Duke pizza comes with pepperoni, three cheeses, meatballs, and mozzarella. Well, what the fuck is mozzarella if it isn't a cheese? Does that mean I'm getting four cheeses, or are you trying to make me think I'm getting more toppings than I actually am, you asshole? Being forced to watch a news broadcast at a bar. The only acceptable television viewings at a bar are any sport, with the exception of soccer, because, well, it's soccer, or a TNT broadcast of the Shawshank Redemption. Those people weren't so fucked up after their games They'd make a mint selling their stories. Yeah, f those people who went through an insane and traumatic experience for not immediately thinking about how they could make a fast buck. Movie never gives us the scene of Hoffman at Walmart getting his paint mixed. I can just imagine the guy behind the counter asking, what do you need the paint for? And Hoffman replies, you know, just gonna paint some words of wisdom on various walls, doors, and stairs in an abandoned building of some sort, which will lead someone into different rooms where I have placed his colleagues and traps. Just another day that ends in Y, am I right? There's a new game going on. No, as far as you know, that game concluded. There's nothing about the situation in the junkyard trap that suggests another game is happening, other than you having read the script. Also, because the movie doesn't specify otherwise, we have to assume that Jill goes straight from her ordeal with Hoffman to the police, which means that during this period, while all the police in the country should be looking for him, Hoffman manages to set the junkyard trap for the racist and the multi-stage game for Bobby, the fraud, and kidnap eight people! I just want the movie to tell me how Marty got back to 1985 if Hoffman stole the DeLorean. This was sent here addressed to Jill. I mean, part of me really appreciates this movie trying to desperately come in at a lean 90 minutes, but also, can you let a mother scene breathe before hitting us with the next whammy? What I want is simple. Give me Jill Tuck. Okay, when did Hoffman make this tape? Because either this was before Jill caused Hoffman to rip off half his jaw, or those wounds have healed incredibly quickly. And if it's the former, the forethought and knowledge Hoffman would have to have is all the bullshit. And if it's the latter, his wounds healing that quickly is all the bullshit. So this tape is all the bullshit. You have one minute. He does not. Because this movie f***s with time more than a Doctor Who Terminator crossover, he'll actually have one minute and 44 seconds. We'll need to live or die, Bobby. No! The choice is yours. <laughs> Feels like it's important to hammer home that Bobby could still very easily kill Nina by pulling the fish hook out of her stomach. Not sure he really has the choices that John Kramer and company seem to think he does. Seriously, this is rough, even for a Saw movie. It's as if this movie watched everything in the goronography genre and then said, Hold my intestines! If Bobby is this much of a star, then why aren't all these people waiting in line, staring at him all starstruck and sh**? There's a very good reason they don't put the line directly in front of the person you're lining up to see. It'd be distracting as f for everyone involved. Your name, sir? John. Just want to point out that in what was supposed to be the final chapter of the Saw franchise, Jigsaw, the main villain of the series, is in three minutes of the movie. And that's f***ing stupid. That feeling running through your body is fear. The fear of not knowing if you have what it takes to survive. My gut tells me there's some urine mixed in with that fear. Also, Bobby's ability to survive hasn't really been brought into question. You've been testing his ability to help other people survive, which is only teaching me that I don't like these movies. And that's a lesson I learned six movies ago. She will whine to her death before the clock runs out. Yay, another countdown! Okay, let's speed this up and see how long it actually takes. And because I'm feeling generous, here's a sin for every second past 60 seconds. <laughs> Also, what really sucks is that Bobby actually did hold out for around 38 seconds. Okay, Hoffman could be rigging the games, but don't act like Saw wouldn't beat us over the head with it if that were the case. No! No! Bobby, <laughs> Even though Bobby was just told exactly what he had to do to free Suzanne, he still runs away from the lever and wastes precious time seeing if he can unstrap her, which he knows he can't. Bobby is f***ing worthless! One of the chances these metal attachments going straight into Bobby are not hitting any major organs. I'm willing to lay my bet around the line of not f***ing likely! 
I don't blame you for not giving me Jill Tuck. Hoffman didn't even tell Gibson where to give him Jill Tuck in the last video, so not sure Gibson could have granted that request regardless. Look to where you're being led. This obvious trap leading Gibson to a location is so obvious it came in an email where the subject line is, I'm here, and Gibson still doesn't prepare for this trap to be a trap. Look beyond the crossroad to the clear dawn. Do you see it? I get it. Let's go. Why is Hoffman being so cryptic here? Why wouldn't he just tell Gibson exactly where he needs to go? And if he needs Gibson to be at a certain place at a certain time, why not wait and send the email exactly when he's ready? Do you know where Joyce is? Asking your friend who is currently hanging on for dear life at a f***ing game devised by a serial killer if he knows where your wife is. Don't f***ing move! We're not on the ground floor and a lot of this floor is missing! How did Hoffman or whoever put this trap together know that this dumbass wouldn't walk into thin air and die before Bobby even got there? If the noose around Kale's neck is not removed within 60 seconds. Hello, Jigsaw. You have spent your franchise abusing the sanctity of time itself. You promised to give your victims a set amount of seconds and then exceed those seconds like a monster with no regard for the nitpickers that so vigilantly care about sh like this that doesn't matter. This is your final opportunity to get your sh in order or your sins will be recorded for all time. Tick tock, motherfucker. <laughs> Does Kale live or die, Bobby? The choice is yours. But once again, this is about more than Bobby making a choice. He chooses to help his friend, but he has to clear some obstacles himself in order for that choice to matter. This is less about Bobby's ability to choose and more about his ability to be an Olympic gymnast. Now you're gonna feel a second plank? You'll feel it with your foot! Worst episode of Survivor ever. <laughs> Kale survives this. Well, at least this portion of it he survives. I gotta throw you the key! He's gonna throw him the key? He's gonna throw him the key? Even if Kale miraculously catches the key, how the f is he supposed to unlock the restraint? He can't fing see Bobby! A year later, I transferred to IA, busted three of his guys. He swore he'd get me back. Let me get this straight Gibson pissed off Hoffman a few years back, and Hoffman's been what? Biding his time to get payback? It's very fortunate that John told Jill to go to Gibson, allowing Hoffman the opportunity to stab two birds with one bear trap. The man he killed was released from Clear Dawn Psychiatric Hospital when the state shut it down. That building's been abandoned for years. That's where the game is being played. Let's break down what happened here. Ryan, um, Ryan, sh I'm out of famous Ryans. Ryan Phillippe here, remember this was the place where Hoffman saved his life, but didn't go the extra step of working out what the second part of the clue was? This means that seconds after they get here, they're racing off to the next location, where the actual game is being held. Did he really need to come here to remember the mental facility? Was he like, man, that angel is in this place, but f me, I can't remember a thing about that near-death experience I had. I guess we better go down there and see if it jogs my memory. All right, you get back. You stay with Jill Tuck. You don't let her out of your sight. So you dragged his ass here for a bit of exposition and now you're sending him directly back to the police station? Why the f did you bring him with you in the first place? Also, does he really think that Hoffman just accidentally gave him the location of the game? How does he still not realize this is a trap? For someone who just had both of his sides deeply impaled, Bobby sure is able to get around more quickly than he should. Who's doing this? <laughs> who? Who? Who do you think is doing it, Joyce, the Easter Bunny? Or is it maybe the local serial killer famous for putting people in traps? As you may have guessed, your decision will be as difficult as pulling teeth. I almost admire this movie's attempt to take franchise criticism and make it a plot point. That is, I would be if I thought it was deliberate. I don't want you to see this, baby, okay? Do I have an option of not seeing it? Because I would very much like to not see this. This trying to pull teeth out bullshit goes on for all the bullshit some time and I hate it because for one thing it's super gross and second it doesn't bother me as much as it probably should and I'm terrified of how desensitized this franchise has made me. However unpleasant all the tooth removal sequences were, I'm now more curious than ever how Jigsaw got the numbers on the root of this tooth in particular. He would have had to pull this tooth out and then reinsert it for this to happen. Give me your gun. And make sure you stand at eye level with the barrel while I smash the butt against the wall. I want to make sure the shells don't hit anything important behind you. To prove your status as a survivor, you must overcome a game that should be all too familiar. I bet Bobby is wishing he'd faked his way through a hot dog eating challenge right about now. In order to free yourself and your life, you must hoist yourself with these chains. It really is a crime that Jigsaw is making Bobby hoist himself on hooks instead of a petard of some sort. Baby, I'm so sorry. Bobby has time for this. I lied. I was never in a trap. Bobby thinks Joyce has time for this. I'm your wife! How could you lie to me? Joyce thinks Joyce has time for this. Listen, you get every available officer back to the station. Why aren't there already plenty of officers at the station? I feel like guarding your prize witness to all things Hoffman is a pretty damn important posting to be at. <laughs> oh no, don't kill What's his name? 
I know it isn't Ryan. Ah, f*** it. Kill him, I don't care. Knowing this franchise, he'll be back in the next movie with a cane, vendetta, and some very mild scarring. Also, stealing the finale from Breaking Bad three years before it happened. Yes, that's completely unfair, and yes, this movie absolutely deserves it. Okay, reveal time! We're about to find out that the Junkyard Racist game was set up purely so that Hoffman could sneak into a body bag and be taken to the police station. This means that he had to guarantee that setting off that explosion would make everyone leave and that the coroner's assistant wouldn't take the bodies with him at the same time. He also had to have enough time to take the racist body out. We end up Bernie's him and then hide in the body bag and hope that he's taken back to the police station before Gibson figures out the clues in the email video. Also, why did he have to wait for someone to unzip him? What if Gibson figured out that Hoffman was in the body bag before the coroner got to him? There's no way Hoffman could have timed this to the very minute like we're seeing. Also, the final chapter! If he's been in this bag since the first explosion, who's been initiating all the f***ing TVs, timers, tapes, and traps? I love you, Joey. I'm sure that means a lot after confessing to her that one of the traits she loved most about you is a pack of lies. So fish hook those pecs and keep Joyce from being cooked alive, and maybe, just maybe, she'll tell you to go f*** off nicely when all is said and done. Come on! We just watched Hoffman stab three people in the neck, but for some reason he fumbles the tech lady? Why? Because she's a woman? That's so f***ing sexist. She deserves to be brutally stabbed in the neck just as much as any man. Wait, look, that sounded like a good thing in my head, I swear. I've checked so you don't have to, and it really doesn't look like these are going through any muscle, or not nearly enough to sustain Bobby's body weight. Weekend at Palmer's. Hiding here. Not stopping at Breaking Bad by also besmirching the finale from Back to the Future. I bet you think the fact that he didn't put the hooks in deep enough and is punished for that in the final seconds of the game will make me renege on that sin from earlier. It will not. There are no winners here. Game over! My favorite thing about this movie is how they turned Hoffman into a Michael Myers Terminator immune to being stabbed in the next supervillain for his send-off. I love it. Such a smart idea. What? Is the tone of my voice suggesting otherwise? <laughs> So poor Joyce gets cooked alive because she fell for Bobby's lie? <laughs> Everyone else was complicit in some form, but Joyce has done f*** all to deserve this. And yes, I know Amanda and Hoffman's traps can break John's rules, but this is one of John's traps. He came up with this, so what the f*** did Joyce do to him to deserve this brazen bullsh**? Man, Hoffman is lucky. Because whenever I need a chair to strap someone in and reverse bear trap their face, there just never seems to be a strap chair available. Yay! Liar, liar, wife's on fire. In addition to the nine police employees killed tonight, Jill Tuck, the wife of serial killer John Kramer, has been found dead. Wait, what? Hoffman just left the police station. How have Jill and the remainder of the nine police employees' dead bodies even been discovered not only by the police, but there has been enough time passed to get a report out on the local news? Holy sh! Imagine this reveal in a good movie. Also, rumor has it that the other two pig mask people are Chad 1 and Chad 2 from the start of the movie. And if that's the case, f***ing f this f***ing bitch ass no good piece of horse, sh horse sh movie right in the f***ing hole because that is some sh Congratulations, Dr. Gordon. You survived. Now, I know I kidnapped you, locked you in a bathroom, threatened your family, and forced you to cut off your own foot with a rusty saw. But how do you feel about working with me so we can do the same thing to a bunch of other people, some of whom are completely innocent? Is apparently something Dr. Gordon said yes to. Also, it's a good thing John Kramer was an expert at casting, building, and fitting custom prosthetics and orthotics. It's not like that takes a year or two of schooling and another year or two of residency to become certified at that position. Without you, my work over the last few years would not have been possible. So bringing back the doctor from the first movie is basically a reaction to the criticism that John couldn't do the surgery stuff needed for some of the traps. As a result, we can forever hold this movie up as an example of why you don't listen to the f***ing internet. Jeff's wife, Dr. Lynn Denlin. Ah yes, everyone's favorite part of the Saw franchise where they retcon just about everything that came before it and in turn make it all so meaningless. Having to watch this shot in two dimensions. You can't f***ing do this to me! He can. Game over. Over a decade later and somehow it still is not. There, there was blood everywhere and I just screamed. I just sat there and screamed. Hi Brad, you know how cute I always thought you were. Now you survived a trap created by the infamous Jigsaw Killer, correct? Yes ma'am. Well, that must have been a while. <laughs> well you look nervous. Is it the scars? You wanna know how I got him? The first thing you lose will be your feet below the ankles. Then your hands at the wrists. Next, your nose. And if those people weren't so f***ed up after their games, they'd make a mint selling their stories. 
Light bulb. Hoffman just sent an email with an MPEG attachment. I'm just searching the IP address. Nerd! One, two, three! Missed it by that much. Why won't you die? You! No! As you wish. Game over. Can you fly, Bobby?